In the last lecture, we get the idea of discrete time convolution and now in this lecture, we will understand how to perform discrete time convolution using a more simple method known as tabular method and we will understand how to perform the tabular method of discrete time convolution by the help of two examples. In the first example, we are having two discrete time signals x1n and x2n. Signal x1n is having the values 1, 2, minus 2 and 2 is the value of signal when n is equal to 0 and signal x2n is having the values 2, 0, 1 and 1 is the value of signal when n is equal to 0 and we are required to find out a discrete time signal y n which we are getting after performing the convolution of two signals x1 n and x2 n. So let's move on to the solution. You can perform the convolution using the method I explained in the previous lecture. That is the actual way to perform the convolution. Tabular method is nothing but the same method arranged in a simple manner. As we know, we are performing the tabular method, there must be a table and this is our table and I will write down the values of signal x1n horizontally and I will write down the values of signal x2n vertically. So let's write down the values of the first discrete time signal x1n horizontally 1, 2, minus 2, 1, 2, minus 2 and let's write down the values of the second discrete time signal x2n vertically 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1. Now focus on the method. We will obtain our first row by multiplying the first element of x2n by all the elements of x1n. So 2 multiplied to 1 will give us 2, 2 multiplied to 2 will give us 4, 2 multiplied to minus 2 will give us minus 4. Pretty easy. Now let's obtain our second row and we will multiply now the second element of x2n by all the elements of x1n. When you multiply 0 to 1 to 2 to minus 2, you will get 0. Following the same process, to get the third row, we will multiply the third element of x2n to all the elements of x1n. So we have 1, 2, minus 2. So this is our complete table and now we will obtain the elements of signal yn. To get the elements of signal yn, we will perform the addition diagonally. So you can see that. 2 is alone here, there is no other element diagonally with 2, therefore we will write 2 as it is. After this, we will add 0 and 4, 0 plus 4 is equal to 4, then we have 1 plus 0 plus minus 4, 1 plus 0 plus minus 4 is equal to minus 3, after this we have 2 plus 0 which is 2 and then finally this minus 2 is alone so we will write minus 2. So these are the elements of our signal yn and now we will focus on obtaining the element which is present at n equal to 0 because without defining the element present at n equal to 0 we don't have the complete information about signal yn. So let's understand how to get the element present at n equal to 0. For that, we will focus on the elements of x1n and x2n present at n equal to 0. You can see that x1n is having 2 as the element present at n equal to 0 and x2n is having the 1 as the element present at n equal to 0. So what we will do, we will draw a vertical line passing through 2 and we will draw a horizontal line passing through 1 and you can see that 
this is the point of intersection and at this point we are having 2 as the value in the table and this 2 when added with 0 is giving us 2 so whatever value you are getting after the addition of this element you will put your arrow below that value so 2 is the value of yn when n is equal to 0 so this is our answer now let's move on to the second example we will first draw the table and we will write down the values of signal x1n horizontally we will write down the values of discrete time signal x1n horizontally minus 1 2 0 1 minus 1 2 0 and 1 after this we will write down the values of signal x2 and vertically 3 1 0 minus 1 3 1 0 and minus 1 now let's obtain the rows of the table to get the first row we will multiply 3 to minus 1 3 to 2 3 to 0 and 3 to 1 this will give us minus 3 6 0 and 3 after this we will obtain the second row and for that we will multiply 1 to all the elements of x1n this will give us minus 1 2 0 1 and the third row will be 0 0 0 0 and the final row will be 1 minus 2 0 minus 1 let's write down the samples of signal yn we will have minus 3 then we have minus 1 plus 6 that is 5 after this we have 0 plus 2 plus 0 this means 2 then we have 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 3 this means 4 then we have minus 2 plus 0 plus 1 this will give us minus 1 then we have 0 plus 0 giving us 0 and finally we have minus 1 now we will get the value of signal y n when n is equal to 0 and for that we will locate the value of signal x1 n when n is equal to 0 that is 2 this 2 here after this we will locate the value of signal x2 n when n is equal to 0 and the value is 0 so you can see that we are getting the intersection point as this one and this is the element at the intersection point so 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 3 is giving us 4 and we are getting this result after adding the element at the intersection point therefore 4 is the value of signal yn when n is equal to 0 so this is the final answer and now after obtaining this answer we will move on to the homework problem in the homework problem you can see that two signals are given and you need to find yn which is equal to convolution of x1n and x2n so solve the homework problem and once you have your answer post it in comment section.